Um, I'm going to try to take just a couple minutes. Cause take your time. We got. <laughs> <laughs> got lots of time. Um, um, I've been trying to um, finish my graduate school um, by December 11th, and um, through some of my um, studies at App State, I've done some um, surveys with you guys, and I appreciate those that have participated in those surveys. But one thing I noticed from our technology surveys is um, we're all doing some really cool stuff in our classrooms with technology um, that I think we would all benefit from. And I don't know about you guys, but I spend a lot of time trying to find something really cool to do with my students, and I end up spending a lot of time at finding not anything that's of very high quality. So um, one of my thoughts was to um, have a short share session with some of us about something really cool that we're doing in our classroom that I think everyone would find valuable. It's kind of like giving you that nugget of things that we, we are using that you could learn too. Um, so I, we thought we'd try that out on the longest staff meeting of the year. <laughs> so I'm going to share this with you really quick, and then I'm hoping that I can get a couple other people that have listed some really awesome things on my survey to come share with you as well. Um, so this is a really great site that is, um, works for all subject areas. It's called gapminder.org, and it's a really great site uh, where they take um, data from all sorts of years and all sorts of countries. And like Christy was saying, we're trying to get our kids not to memorize, but to think and put things in words and rationalize and pull in their thoughts and their ideas. And this is a super great site to do that. Um, it is mathematically driven, it's social studies driven, but you can also use it in language arts. Um, I was thinking about Spanish, all sorts of things. But basically, it's a really great graph. All of these um, circles represent different countries, and you can see the regions that they represent here. And then the size of the circle um, indicates the population. So the bigger the circle, the bigger the population is. Um, and then you can take the x and y axis, and you can um, use all different types of um, data. Um, it comes with income per person, and life, life expectancy in years. And basically what you can do is, after I just messed that up, um, you can play how those things have changed over time. And I was playing with this with my students a little bit today and getting them <coughs> to come up with um, some statements about that. So if we look, we have income per person and we have life expectancy. So you can kind of come up with some ideas of what you think would happen as life goes on and their income increases. So you can actually play this. It starts in 1804, and you can look at the different countries and how they've changed um, through time. And so we talked a little bit in class about how the up and down is life expectancy, and it's how it moves to the right is the income per person. So you can see how the income affects the um, life expectancy. And so you can increase and decrease the speed of this, as fast as you want, you can make it go oops, faster or slower, maybe, if you're touching it right. Let's try fast. Um, and then you can also look at specific countries, and that's why I was thinking about for Spanish, if you want to focus on more Spanish-speaking countries. Um, Ms. White and I have been talking about her book that she's reading with her students called The Translator, and it has to do with um, the um, people in Sudan. Um, and so you can really kind of focus <coughs> on different things. Um, if I want to just focus on, this is really wild, this thing. If I want to just look at how Sudan has changed, um, for Mrs. White, because I'm going to read this book with her, and it looks really, really cool. So I can just focus on Sudan, and then you can look at the data of just Sudan and how Sudan has changed over the years. And so here we can have start students talking about their life expectancy isn't changing, but their income per person is. Yeah. And, um, and then you can really see a big difference in that one right there. And you can pick a couple different countries and it'll follow it. Um, I created a, a Google Doc where they had to put what was on the x-axis, what was on the y-axis, what happened, pick a certain country, 
Um, and it also has, so you know, you can do all sorts of things. My kids all picked um, murder and war today because that was really interesting to them. Um, but if you go to the home, it also has um, teacher lesson plans for teachers. They have labs set up that you can do with your kids. And then they have all sorts of videos. So um, I thought this might be a nugget for you in your classroom. It's pretty neat to use with the kids individually, but also you could really get some discussion. Why did that jump up so high? What happened in history that's changed that? We um, looked at um, Guatemala today and their murder rate, and it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth like that. So you can really create some genuine discussions with your students on this site. So there's my nugget to you. And I'm hoping I can talk to one particular person to share their nugget next time. Okay, thank you.